Hi friends, Ashley from Ashley Young Music Studio here. Welcome to our two week piano sight reading challenge. Today is day five. Today we're gonna go through an example together like we've been doing for all of the videos. And today our focus is going to be on articulation. So legatos, staccatos, two note slurs, all of those kinds of things. We're gonna have an example that has a couple of different instances of articulations. And so we're gonna make sure that we observe those in today's video. Now I'd love to hear how your practice went yesterday. You were focusing on dynamics. So let me know in the comments below how that went for you and what you're having success with. So let's take a look at today's example. All right, now you can see in today's example, I went ahead and drew in some articulations because sightreadingfactory.com did not give me the articulations that I wanted. So I went ahead and wrote some in. So they look a little bit funky, but you'll get the idea. We have some staccatos here on the top line. Those are the little dots that are over and under the notes. And staccatos mean that we're gonna play the notes short and detached. And then we also have some legatos. These symbols right here are written over and under the notes on the second line. Legato means that we're gonna play smooth and connected. So we wanna make sure that we're gonna observe those. Now, before we dive in to do our investigation into this piece, I just wanted to, I just wanna take a second to talk about staccato because oftentimes when students see staccato in the music, they will play in a way that creates a much different sound than if there was no staccato. And so when people see staccato, they'll oftentimes kind of like poke the note. But when we play staccato, it doesn't have to do with how we play the note actually, it has to do with how we release the the note. So if there's a staccato on a note, it means that that note is short and detached. So we're going to play the note exactly the same that we would play it if we played it legato. We're just going to lift it a little sooner. So one thing that I like to keep in mind, and a very general rule, because this isn't going to apply for everything, but we can apply it today, is that when we see a staccato, we can think about playing the note for like half of its value. So our example's in 6-8 time. So if the staccato is on a quarter note, which in 6-8 time gets two beats, we would hold it for one beat. And if the staccato is on an eighth note, which in 6-8 time gets one beat, we would hold it for half of a beat. So we want to try to really focus on playing the note the same, but just releasing it a little bit early. And that's what creates that staccato sound. It's also going to help us avoid the pokey sound that staccatos can sometimes have. All right, so let's look at our example. Now today I chose another example that is in 6-8 time because it's a challenging time signature and it's good to be familiar with it. So we know that in each measure we're gonna be counting one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's go ahead and write our counts in just like we did yesterday. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And as we're doing this, you might notice that this piece looks a little more challenging than yesterday's. It is a little more challenging, but don't be scared. We're gonna go through it all together and make sure that you've got a good idea of what's happening before we put our hands on the keys. All right, here's a dotted quarter rest, which gets three beats. Okay, now in the second line, we have three beats here, and then four, five, six, and then two beats here. This gets one beat, this gets two beats, one beat. We've got three beats in the left hand, and then three additional beats in the left hand while the right hand is holding, and then three beats in both hands and three beats of rest. So now we have our rhythm written in and <clears throat> we can either choose right now to clap and count out loud or we can go investigate a bunch of other things and then clap and count out loud. In the last video, we did the rhythm first. So I'm gonna investigate the rest of the piece and then at the end, we'll clap and count out loud before we do our mock play. So as mentioned before, we have some different articulations. And in music, articulations are the symbols that tell us how to play a note. So legato, staccato, accents, two note slurs, all of those are examples of articulations. And if you're unclear on what articulations are or how to play them, I have a really short video on articulations that you can check out right here. And it'll give you a good idea of what the most common articulations are and how to play them. So if you're totally unfamiliar with articulation, maybe start with that video and then come back to this one. So in this piece, we have staccatos. Those are the little dots over and under the notes. And it's important to notice that with staccatos, the dots are over or under the notes. That's very, very, very important because we also have these dots that I'm highlighting here in brown that are next to the notes. And those are showing us that this note value is a dotted quarter note. So note values are gonna be dots next to the notes, whereas staccatos are always over or under the notes. Now for this piece, we have three sharps here in our key signature at the beginning. And it's an F sharp, a C sharp, and a G sharp. And three sharps means that I'm most likely gonna be in the key of A major. If I look at my last note here, the last note of the entire piece, I do notice that it's an A in both hands. 
So that's pretty good evidence that I'm in the key of A major. So let's find our hand position. I'm gonna have my pinky here in the left hand on A. That's great. That means my left hand is at least starting out in an A major five finger pattern. And then up here in the right hand, my third finger is gonna be on this C sharp, which would put my thumb on the A, which means my right hand is also in a five finger pattern. Let's scan through and see if either hand plays a note that's below A or above E. And I'm gonna scan through kind of quickly because I can, but when you're doing this in your own sight reading, make sure that you take your time and really investigate every single note so that you don't miss any hand position changes or any stretches in the music. So in this example, both hands are playing in an A major five finger pattern, which is awesome. That means I don't have to worry about moving. Now, in my A major five finger pattern, I do need to remember that my third fingers are gonna be on C sharps. The nice thing about the A major five finger pattern is there is no F or G, so I don't have to worry about those sharps, but I do need to remember the C sharp. So those third fingers are gonna stay on the C sharp for the duration that we're playing this piece so that we don't have to stop and fumble around to find them. The fingers are already gonna be there. All right, so pattern wise, let's look through each hand and try to find some rhythmic patterns first, and then we'll try to find some melodic patterns. So rhythm wise, we've got this pattern in the right hand of a quarter note and then an eighth note. And we see that often, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note. And that's a pretty common rhythm that we see in six, eight time. We also have a few instances of three eighth notes in a row, taking up half the measures here. So like here in the left hand, or here in the right hand. And then of course there are a couple of dotted quarter notes as well. Now, the second measure of the first line and the second measure of the second line are rhythmically exactly the same. So that's nice, we have at least two measures that are the same. And then the fourth measure and the eighth measure are exactly the same as well. So we do have a couple measures where the rhythm pattern repeats, but then this example is really more full of like small rhythm examples that repeat throughout. So let's look at melodic patterns. My right hand, I'm gonna scan through and see what am I doing interval-wise. I have a lot of skips, so a lot of thirds, a couple of steps, and I have several intervals that are actually larger than thirds. I've got a skip of a fourth here, I've got another skip of a fourth here. So my right hand is moving around quite a bit, a skip of a fifth here. Then I'm moving up by steps until here, and then a skip, step, step, and then down to an A. So I would maybe at this point, if this, if this example feels kind of challenging, and if that right hand is looking a little overwhelming, I would maybe mock play the right hand all by itself. And just give my fingers a really slow chance to find those larger intervals and to feel what it's like underneath the hand so that it's not shocking when you try to sight read it. There's not really melodic patterns and that makes it a little bit trickier because we don't have things that are repeating. And so mock playing the right hand alone would be a really great idea if this seems challenging. Let's look at the left hand. So in the left hand, I'm starting, I'm doing some step, step, skip, skip, step, large interval of a fourth, so similar things going on in the left hand. It's a little jumpy and there's quite a bit happening there. So I could also mock play the left hand alone to give it a chance to experience some of those larger intervals. The one thing that I notice between the hands as I'm looking is that there are some times where the hands are doing the same thing and that's exciting. So here, so here in the third measure, at least for the first part of it, I've got D's in both hands, A's, and then C sharps. So both hands are doing the same notes there and that's really nice. And then again here. Now for these first two measures of the second line, my hands are doing the exact same notes. That's nice. So with all the pink boxes on the music, you can see that these are parts of the music where our hands are playing in unison. They're playing the same notes, which is really exciting. That makes those parts a little bit easier. Now, unfortunately, that means that these parts in yellow are not playing the same notes, and that's gonna be a little bit trickier. Oh, and I've got the same notes right here and right here as well. But we do need to look out for the notes in the yellow boxes, because those are instances when the hands are playing different notes. And because we are often playing the same notes in each hand, it's gonna be especially different when we play different notes. And so 
I'm gonna take away all the boxes now, but I am gonna highlight in yellow the notes that are different in each hand. So you have a visual clue to pay extra attention there because the notes are different in each hand. All right, so I think I've got a pretty good sense of the rhythmic patterns and the lack of melodic patterns. So now I'm gonna put my hands up and I'm gonna start tapping and counting out loud to see if I can get a sense for how the rhythm feels. Because there's so much going on in this example, I am gonna tap it at 40, which is a really slow tempo, but I wanna take it nice and slow because there's a lot going on. And as I clap and count out loud, I'm gonna observe the articulations with my voice. So I'm gonna make the staccato notes. I'm gonna make the counts for the staccato notes a little shorter, and I'm gonna try to connect the counts for the legato notes so that I have a sense of what those articulations are gonna sound like even before I play the notes. One, two, three, four, five, Six. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so the clapping and counting went pretty well. At this point, if you need to rewind and do that many more times, I would highly recommend that because this is rhythmically dense. And once we add notes, it's gonna get even more a little more challenging. But once you feel confident with the rhythm, then we can put our fingers on the keys to mock play. And remember when we mock play, we're not actually playing, we're just moving the fingers around and observing the rhythm, observing the notes, the sharps, all of that. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so what I'm noticing about my mock playing is that it's really challenging. So I would recommend doing that many times in a row and you can rewind the video and follow along several times in a row until the mock playing feels a little bit easy. I'm also noticing that I'm having a little trouble staying at that slower tempo. So I'm gonna make sure that I really settle in to this slow tempo so I have time to think about things. It's really easy to rush the staccato notes since they're shorter, but I need to make sure not to do that. So now after I've mock played it several more times and that feels a little easier, I'm gonna try to sight read it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three, 
three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so that playthrough went okay. It felt a little slow, but I was able to observe the articulation. I was able to observe the dynamic. I did play the notes correctly, which was really great because this one's a little challenging. I think things that I could do better next time would be to maybe think a little more specifically about how to play those staccatos. I mentioned that we should hold them for maybe half the value of the note, and I don't think I was totally consistent with that when I was playing through. And then I would maybe also, tomorrow when I practice, try to sing through a little bit of my pieces just to get an idea of what they sound like before I play. This one had like a funky sound. For some reason today it was really surprising to my ear, and so I was surprised by almost every single part of it. And so if I have the skill set to maybe sing through a little bit before I sight read, I can get a sense of what the melody is going to sound like and it might not be so surprising. So those are my notes for myself for my practice tomorrow. Now tomorrow when you practice, I want you to practice a piece in the key of A major if that feels challenging or pick a new key if it doesn't. And if 6-8 time is still challenging, maybe try one more practice day at 6-8 time or if not pick a new practice pick a new time signature. Now focus on your articulation. If there aren't articulations, you can maybe add some in or have the website keep regenerating them until you find one with articulations. Remember to go slow, remember to count out loud, remember to set a timer for at least five minutes so you fully investigate everything that's going on before you do your sight reading. Let me know how it's going for you in the comments below and go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you're having fun and if you're enjoying this challenge and I'll see you next time.